Good evening. Australia has taken a giant step closer to legalising same-sex marriage. The bitterness and fear of the often ugly debate today gave way to cheers and unbridled joy as the Yes campaign declared a historic victory in the postal survey. Brett McLeod begins our coverage. As thousands waited outside the State Library, optimism was wedded to anxiety. A bit anxious but really hopeful that Australia is going to bring a big yes vote back. As the clock ticked closer to 11, the wait for some was almost unbearable until three months after the survey was announced. And now the official results of the Australian Marriage Law Postal Survey. Our Chief Statistician delivered the people's verdict. Yes responses, 7,817,000 and 247. Representing 61.6%. The cheers very quickly gave way to a gamut of emotions. So happy, like crying, laughing, singing. We're now recognised in this country as human as beings and it's, just, it's an amazing day. It wasn't until the entire crowd jumped up and cheered that, um, that it really started to sink in and now I'm starting to cheer up a little bit. Across the country, a colourful celebration, not least by the public faces of the Yes campaign. For me, it, this represents a fairer Australia. We can rely on the Australian people to do the bloody right thing. Go us! Thank God, and thanks to the Australian people, we have seen it. When are you getting married? Uh, we're planning to get married on the 2nd of February, 2018. All eyes turn to our political leaders for the next step. They voted yes for fairness. They voted yes for commitment. They voted yes for love. I'm glad for a whole lot of Australians, the pressure's lifted from their shoulders. 61.6% of Australians who participated in the survey said yes, while 38.4% said no. Breaking it down, Victoria was second only to the ACT, recording a yes vote of 64.9%. Can I just say how proud I am to be the Premier of the most progressive state in our nation? Yes. And looking at the Victorian results by electorate, the biggest supporters were Melbourne, Melbourne Ports and Higgins, while the only two electorates in the state to vote majority no were Corwell and Bruce. As the first out woman in the Victorian Parliament, I can say that it's taken a huge toll for so many of us, for our families, for our supporters. A sentiment shared by many over a survey few, if any here, actually wanted. I have been fighting for this for 15 years and uh, the last, especially the last few months have been painful. It's been an incredibly stressful time for um, people in relationships and families like mine and to feel that truly we have a line in the sand now and we can move forward. While some seize the historic moment to make some history of their own. I want to tell you something in front of the cameras. <laughs> And of course, the answer today of all days was yes. And Brett joins me now from Lycon Street. Brett, the celebrations are continuing. Yes, Pete, tonight they're painting Lycon Street rainbow. There's a sea of happy faces around here. And they feel there's much to celebrate, not only the national vote, not only the fact that Victoria had the highest state yes vote, but the capital city with the highest yes vote was Melbourne. There will be speeches from various organisers tonight, as well as politicians Daniel Andrews and Bill Shorten. No doubt there will be some reflection on the cost, both financial and personal, in carrying out this survey. But now it's finished. The results are clear for everyone to see. And also tonight, the weather is not exactly helping. There has been already some rain and a sea of umbrellas coming out. But in many ways, it's only appropriate because very strongly today across the country, Pete, we have seen the winds of change. Yes, indeed, we have. Thank you, Brett. And we're live now to Canberra and political editor Chris Yulman. Now, Chris, the people have said yes. When will the politicians act? Oh, very soon, Pete. The overwhelming yes vote means there's now unstoppable momentum for change. A new Marriage Act should pass by early December. 
that will expose divisions in the coalition, which will test the Prime Minister. But they're fast evaporating, so in the end, Malcolm Turnbull can rightly claim that he delivered where two Labor Prime Ministers balked. And look, there's another fascinating tale in today's result. Of 150 federal seats, only 17 voted no, but 12 of those were in Western Sydney. That's a crucial federal election battleground. So everyone in politics will be looking at that result and wondering what it means for them. But that's a question for another day. Today, Pete, the Australian people delivered a verdict that Parliament won't ignore. After so much waiting, debate, division and bitterness, it all came down to this. For the national result, yes responses. 7 million 817. Yeah. Representing 61.6% of clear responses. Raw, unbridled emotion. For Penny Wong, it was all too much. Uncontrolled tears of relief and joy, not just political, but deeply personal. Thank you, Australia. It was the same for the coalition. Trent Zimmerman broke the news to North Sydney supporters. We'll sort this out by Christmas and I'm expecting an invitation to the wedding. Ah, uh, you will be at the wedding now. <laughs> Thank you. An overwhelming yes and a promise to see it through. Now it is up to us here in the Parliament of Australia to get on with it. To get on with the job the Australian people have tasked us to do and get this done this year before Christmas. <laughs> Bill Shorten was covered in confetti and smothered in a moment in history. Today we celebrate, tomorrow we legislate. They know the fight's not over, but it is almost certainly the beginning of the end. Ladies and gentlemen, Advance Australia Fair. This is Australia's day, the most important electoral mandate we have seen. A mandate for change, a mandate for fairness, a mandate for equality because it is time. It is time to change the marriage law. It is time to remove discrimination. It is time for equality. Political colours blended together in a parliamentary rainbow alliance. We are so proud to be standing here today with such an emphatic result that says yes to love. Even the staunchest no voters accept the result. I am not going to vote against this. I am not going to frustrate the will of the public. I regret the decision of my fellow Australians, but, uh, but I nevertheless respect it. If the proper protections are there, this will sail through the parliament. And that process began within hours with a tabling of legislation to make it all legal. Great. Debate on Dean Smith's bill begins tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Attorney General George Brandis will move amendments to strengthen religious protection. Lane Kelker, 9. Victoria has led the nation in supporting same-sex marriage with almost 65% voting yes in the historic postal survey. Only two Melbourne electorates voted against marriage equality. The announcement met with tears and glitter in the city. Nick McCallum begins our coverage. There was so much tension in the lead-up. 61.6% of clear responses were yes. <laughs> My whole body just went numb. It went numb. I'm gonna stop crying. I'll just cry. <laughs> Every dream I've had since and I was little is really now a reality. Last week I'm, turned I'm speechless. <laughs> Equal rights. You could tell just how much this means to so many here. When the time comes that we want to get married, we're able to do so. Well, it looks as though you're ready now. <laughs> <laughs> As they actually change the law, no. we'll absolutely get married. Katie and Marina married under British law. After today, likely to be recognised here, delighting their son Archie. We just clung on to each other and started crying. It's kind of palpable the sense of relief and emotion in that crowd. <laughs> Both sides of politics joined in the celebration. Australia is ready for marriage equality! It is unequivocal. It is overwhelming. 
Almost 65% of Victorians voted yes, the most of any state. Can I just say how proud I am to be the Premier of the most progressive state in our nation? Yes. The strongest support for same-sex marriage, the inner city. More than 83% in the electorate of Melbourne. In the outer suburbs, a closer vote, but only two seats voted no. Caldwell in the north and Bruce in the east, based around Glen Waverley. I think the important thing from now is to make sure uh, that there are appropriate protections uh, for people who have uh, conscientious objections. Personally, I would have preferred the no vote as well. But it's something that I must believe in. In Sydney, John Paul Young was joined by the highest profile yes campaigners. If my 11-year-old self had known this, it would have meant a very different life for me. It means that the way that you feel for another person, whoever that may be, is equal. Um, and for me, knowing that back when I was younger, when I struggled with my own sexual identity, most certainly would have helped. International support too from Kylie Minogue. Love is love, she tweeted. And from Ellen DeGeneres, way to go, Australia. While today it's all about celebration for the families, for the couples, for the activists here, tomorrow they know it'll be back to work lobbying politicians. They need the new law passed because they've got plans. We were going to fly to New Zealand to get married and now we can do it in front of our friends and family. We're so happy, so excited, so in love, just stoked. Mick McCallum, 7 News. And Blake Johnson is at Trades Hall this evening where Yes supporters are gathering. Blake, they'll be celebrating long into the night. You bet they will, Mitch. That street party has already begun. They have closed off Ligon Street outside the Trades Hall, which has been a bit of an unofficial headquarters for the uh, local Yes campaign. Plenty of smiles on faces here as the choir gets underway, as the crowd has had a whole day of the fact settling in that most of the country supports them. Some 7,000 people RSVP to this event on Facebook. Not sure if we'll get that uh, because of the rain, but there's probably at least two to 3,000 here already. Lots of rainbow flags, as you'd expect. In fact, we're standing on a giant one painted on the street. Premier Daniel Andrews and Federal Opposition Leader Bill Shorten are coming here at 10 past to address the crowd. Victoria being the state with the highest number of returned yes votes. It's been a tough couple of months for the LGBTQI community. I think it'll let off some steam tonight, Mitch. Thank you, Blake. The Prime Minister says Australia has spoken and politicians should follow through and make same-sex marriage legal by Christmas. But he's under pressure from Conservative MPs in his own government. A marriage of hope bridging the political divide. The result for Labor's Penny Wong, overwhelming. For Liberal Tim Wilson, exhilarating. The people have spoken. And now it is up to us, here in the Parliament of Australia, to get on with it. Today we celebrate. Tomorrow we legislate. A cross-party bill to do that introduced today by Liberal Dean Smith. Advance Australia fair. This is Australia's day. Supported down to its bootstraps by a rainbow coalition of co-signatories, including Labor, Green and Crossbench Senators. People working across party lines in the national interest. It is basically a Greens Labor bill, uh, aided and abetted by uh, people in the Liberal Party. The bill includes protections for religious ministers and civil celebrants who refuse to conduct same-sex weddings, but Conservatives want more. The Smith bill is grossly inadequate in that regard. Seeking protections for businesses refusing service to same-sex weddings on religious or other grounds. I will want to see strong religious protections in that bill. A former Conservative Prime Minister adding this warning. I don't think the base of the coalition's vote should be ignored. Conscious of that, Malcolm Turnbull is open to increasing those protections, not as much as the Conservatives might like, and how far they do go will ultimately be up to the Parliament. This is a free vote. Debate will begin in the Senate tomorrow with a final vote in the House expected in the last scheduled week of sittings in December. And get this done this year before Christmas. Of 150 electorates, 133 said yes, just 17 no. They voted yes for commitment.
They voted yes for love. Thank you, Australia. And it now appears a certainty that this will pass by Christmas, Mitch. The only questions are what concessions will be made in the way of added protections. Don't forget, Malcolm Turnbull has said he's just as passionate about religious freedoms as he is about same-sex marriage. Well, this process will test that. And also how much noise the Conservatives will make along the way. They will lose, but they might lose loudly. There's also a message in this, though, for Bill Shorten. Nine of the ten seats recording the highest no votes are held by Labor. Mitch?